Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, I want to discuss two questions that keep coming up redundantly, probably more so than any other question I've dealt with um, since I've opened my business. Um, and the first question is usually revolved around plasma systems, although it doesn't have to be. The biggest question that I get asked with that is, tell me what's the difference between this system and yours? Okay, of course, they found a system online, the price is much higher. They look at my system, my price is much lower, and it just is, you know, pure logic that they're going to ask, hey, what's the difference? Second question coincides with that. Usually it comes from an end user who's purchased from a different vendor a system. They're ready to upgrade, ready to retrofit, ready to do a repair, whatever it may be. And they go to look on the on the manufacturer's site. They're either out of business or they're uh, they're still in business, but the parts are you know 60 to 70 percent higher than they should be, at least from what market standards should be as far as what they're shopping around for. And they'll come to me and say, "Can I use these parts, or are, is there anything different between what you're selling and they're they're selling?" Guys, let me let me clue you in on something, and just let me reiterate a point here. Uh, for those who are not familiar with motion control. Think in, in the 90s, like early 90s to mid 90s when Dell, HP, all those computer manufacturers used to let you configure your computer, which I know a lot of them still do today. Um, it's just not seen on TV as much as it used to be. It used to be the Dell dude and all that neat stuff. And you buy your new computer, you get it home. Within a couple of weeks, of course, technology is moving at light speed. So you're ready to upgrade memory and you go to buy memory. And Dell, of course, you go on Dell's site, you go to look up the memory, and it's 60 to 70% higher than what a stick of Crucial or Kingston would be. Lifetime warranty, same top of the line stuff that they're using. But because it has Dell's name on it, that's what they're charging you for it. Motion control is the exact same thing, guys. Okay, I wanted you guys to pay very close attention to this picture here because I'm about to dispel some really huge myths and misinformation online. You can see here, this is from a company, Can CNC. I have no regard to badmouth them. I'm here to shed light on the facts behind motion control. Okay? If you look here and see CAN CNC, it says revision 8, G251 4. Let's see what G251 4 actually symbolizes. You've got 1, 2, 3, 4 G251 drivers. Okay? And you also have the terminal blocks for these drives. Uh, they are not G250s because they have the terminal blocks. If they were, uh, again, that makes these G251X drives. Okay, I sell these drives individually in packages on my store. You can validate that by going to my site and checking it out. That being said, if you wanted to buy this same setup in a much easier configuration, the only thing you would need to do is buy a Gecko G540. The G540 encompasses these same drives in a G250 format, which is just missing the terminal block, because again, uh, inside the G540, it's a small unit, and to, to actually save space, the terminal blocks aren't there. They plug directly into the motherboard, which is an integrated system, and then you have your breakout board and your DB25 and your charge pump settings and all that neat stuff. So if you wanted the same control as this without buying the proprietary motherboard setup, you just buy a G540. Now, Let's discuss some interesting things. If you buy this board from Can CNC, you're going to pay over $500 for it. Still a four-axis board, still proprietary in the sense you need all the plugs that need to be plugged in. If you go to buy a G540, you can purchase the drive and get the same performance in a non-proprietary format because it's a gecko, it's a gecko drive. So you can actually purchase all those components from anybody, whether it be from me, them, anyone which means your system is no longer locked into that proprietary format. Guys, I cannot emphasize this enough. Be careful with that because in the end, if, if for whatever reason you're, you, the company goes out of business, you're not happy with their support, you're not happy with their service, you do not want to deal with that. And I hate to say it in this industry, you speak to – I wish – everybody to speak to a lot of the past clients unfortunately that's not always easy to do of some of these companies and they will give you horror stories I hear them all the time I wish I didn't but that's not always the case I hear it all the time most people are not contacting me because parts are not in stock they're contacting me because either the company they don't want to do business with anymore or they feel that the parts that they're selling are just astronomically priced um, again this is the case here. This motherboard set that you see versus a G540, once again, is the same thing. 
If you look at a set from them that encompasses a plasma system, a plasma motion control system, just to give you guys a heads up, a difference between a plasma motion control system and a regular motion control system is only one difference in my store, and that is the fact that I integrated the Proma Torch height controller. That being said, in all honesty, you only need the Torch height control system if and only if you're dealing with very, very, very thin substrates, thin metal substrates, because, again, that's when warpage would be the highest. If you start going quarter inch and above or you're dealing in high quality substrates where you know you're not going to have massive amounts of warpage or warpage for that matter at all, depending upon what size you're going with, you do not need a torch height controller. Okay, There are many companies I've sold to, many large companies, that refuse to use them. OK, so again, there's some myths. There's a lot of misinformation out there. And again, some of it deters your pocketbook. I don't believe in that. I want you guys to have the right information. I want you guys to know the truth. And the truth is stay within your budget, ask the right questions and do your due diligence. When I see things like this where, you know, companies try to act like they're reinventing the wheel when we already know a G540 is the same system. Again, or at least I'm trying to let you guys know, pay attention to things like that. Because in the end, you're going to look at, well, why am I paying the difference? It's going to naturally dawn on you. And that's, again, why I get these questions. I get asked that constantly. And I'm telling you right now, motion is motion. Okay? When I see guys asking me about, you know, technique steppers and these real high end different things that are coming out and they, they look, you know, they try to make it look like this is rocket science. They're trying to make it look like they're cutting edge and they're on something new. Think about it this way motion control is changing with technology just like everything else. Okay? The difference is if, if it's not visual in the products that it's making, there is no point in purchasing it. And the reason I say that is because if you're not seeing it on a direct product to, to actually resell, which is what most guys are doing for business purposes, or for that matter, if you're doing it for a hobby, if I can't see the difference, why am I paying the difference? And I cannot emphasize that enough. If you're buying a system that encompasses the same drives as in the G540, I'm not going to pay any more for that. You know, If I'm not comfortable wiring it, I'll have someone do it, but I'm certainly not going to do that. You know, the other thing to keep in mind is that when you go to these large companies, OK, and when I say large companies, I don't know how many people are actually employed by this company. OK, I've seen their website and I can tell you just by looking at the website and the way it's set up and the way that they have their support set up and whatnot, they are paying multiple people to run this site and that those multiple people all have salaries. And that's where that business model comes from of charging what they charge. For their systems. Can I justify their cost on their system versus mine? Not if we're going by the drives. You would have to contact them and honestly ask them, you know, as far as torch height control, what are they giving you? You know, and then you justify it from there. Always put yourself through the details because the details don't lie. If you ask them the question, you know, what's the difference between your system? Can I see a picture of your system open? A lot of companies, a lot of vendors don't do that. They will not show you the inside of the system. They will not cover the bill detail of the system. Um, again, it's to protect their proprietary rights. They don't want you to know, you know, how did I hook this up? How did I do that? I mean, it's it, to me, it's kind of silly, but it, it kind of gives them what they feel is more like a job security method to where, okay, I'm going to keep having this client purchase parts for me and they'll need my support to put them in or my support to actually install them in general. So you guys have to pay attention to that because in the end, in the beginning, you may find something that looks great. There's a lot of new things coming out all the time. There's vendors coming up online all the time. And the thing to watch out for the most is always look for contact numbers. I tell guys that all the time. If you don't have a contact phone number and you can't get in touch with this company other than by email, I'm telling you right now, I would be very cautious. Because odds are there's a reason they did that. They don't want to talk on the phone. They're not comfortable or they're not willing to support their business at that level. And that should tell you something. I mean, it really should. If you're serious about your business, I mean, I can tell you right now, if I'm dropping the kind of money on a motion control system of where these most of these systems are, I mean, when you're talking over 3,000, I believe CAN does actually have a contact support number in their honor. I mean, honestly, they do. Okay? A lot of them don't. 
So just be careful with that, you know, but by the same token, it's a double edged sword. If they do have a number, then there's somebody manning that number and you can rest assured you're paying his salary and that's what you're paying for. You know, purchasing a subcontracted built system like you do through me, that saves everybody money. It saves me money because I don't have to go out, get a brick and mortar store. It saves you money because you're hiring me direct. The Internet makes it all too easy for us to do business, get everything set up, and it links the, the actual end user with the fabricator, and there's no headache. A lot of them are not happy doing that. They want to go on a much larger scale. I don't want to be that big. And I'll tell you why I don't want to be that big, because this is the kind of stuff you deal with when you get that big. And what you're looking at here is damage to the board right here. I don't know what else has happened here. Over here, it looks like something is, is amiss or that just might be the mounting area. I don't know. But in general, the larger you get with companies, the more problems you have with quality. And most guys, I don't care if it's U.S. built. I don't care if it's not U.S. built. If you had Chevy building 10 cars or 100 cars and you then have them building you know, 2 million cars a day, that's why we have problems. So again, you look at that. Look at the disparity there. You know, quality should never over impede the quantity. And that's that's really what ends up happening. You you have guys putting out all of these products and then the quality suffers because they're just they're focused in 10 different areas or they're focused in hiring, you know, a million different people and putting them, those people in control of certain situations that ultimately control their destiny. And that's something that a lot of these companies do, and that's why a lot of their clients are not there anymore, or they go out of business. So when I say that to you, there's nothing wrong with expansion, but I tell everybody the same thing. Be careful. You know, Don't always wish to be bigger. Wish to be better. Because if you look at that, I mean, it really makes a lot of sense. Sometimes just high-quality production is much, much better than bulk production. And when I, when I look at stuff like this and I see that clients are being forced to purchase stuff like this because the company doesn't want to make people well aware of what they're doing, it, it kind of leads a bad taste in everybody's mouth. Because then, of course, when I educate the, the client and say, look, this is the same as this, they go back and now they hate that company. Then they go back and they badmouth that company and they tell me how much they suck or whatever. And they'll go on a forum and badmouth them. A lot of people forget that today. You know, and that's why I say being honest has its has its perks in that sense, telling you guys the truth and wanting you guys to succeed the right way where, look, I know you're going to pay. There is no way you're going to get out of not paying for good quality uh, tools. And this is a tool just like anything else. Most control systems will definitely accelerate your business and they will accelerate your hobby at a level that is far exceeding anything we've seen in the 90s. The thing is you have to be well aware of what you're purchasing. So guys, please take heed on that, you know. Do your research. I can't emphasize that enough. Pay close attention to things like this because again, you know, when I see when I see things like this that are happening and I see companies charging five, six hundred dollars for board with the same drives in the Gecko G540, and then I get asked by a, just to ask the logical question, what's the difference? That's the difference. You know, I mean, is there any is there going to be any difference? A lot of guys will say, well, what about the parts when I produce my parts? Is there going to be a difference? No. I mean, if the, the machine is set up, the chassis is the exact same. If you line them both up, calibrated them both, trammed them both, set the settings and mock the same. The only difference would be that that's using that three thousand plus dollar system and this isn't. So you just have to use that kind of knowledge. You have to go through and add up the parts, you know, and that's really what it is. Think in computer format. If you're not familiar with that, look into it. Computer, you know, 30. if you buy a computer today and it's got DDR4, 32 gigs of memory, and you buy Kingston memory in one and you buy another, another brand of memory in the other, and they both have the same warranty and they're willing to stand by their products, one is cheaper, you're getting the same. You know, if you buy a flash car or a flash drive and it's 16 gig from Toshiba and another one from, you know, another brand, Kingston, and one is cheaper and it's on sale, it's the same principle, you know, you're getting the same. The biggest difference with anything when it comes to motion control, the biggest difference is how the end user will set that equipment up pending all other components are the same. So if you're using a Gecko drive, you're using a Lead Shine drive, real high-end type drives, the one thing you're going to notice right away 
is that your end result is based upon your knowledge. The more knowledge and time you're willing to put into setting that machine up to, to the acceptable variance you're, you're accustomed to, that's what's going to yield the high-end products that you're hoping to make. So keep just just always reiterate that to yourself because that's really what it is. And once again, if you do have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. I hope this video will save some people some headaches, some money. And uh, for all my clients out there that have been supporting me over the years, I do appreciate you guys. And all my future clients, I do appreciate you as well. Once again, um, you can contact me through either eDealers Direct. That's my store, eDealers Direct Automation on eBay. Or you can contact me directly through my email, storm2313 at gmail.com. Thank you. Take care.